Hello everyone, you are watching a snippet of the countdown program from July 10, 2023. Today is Monday, see the full version on Patreon, and thanks to everyone who is becoming our patrons right now. And I turn to the insider that I just got. I quote the text of the informant. At the time of the NATO summit in Vilnius, Putin personally gave the command to prepare and carry out a provocation on Russian territory with the participation of ethnic Ukrainians. In order to aggravate the relations of the Allies as much as possible and frustrate all possible decisions on the admission of Ukraine to NATO and all other possible options in the adoption of a roadmap in this direction. Several objects have been selected for urgent work on carrying out such a provocation. The most likely object is the Kerch Bridge. They deliberately create colossal traffic jams at the entrance to the Kerch Bridge from two sides. Since Storm Shadow, the most powerful missiles cannot reach the Kerch Bridge at the moment, the Russians are considering other options with the use of the so-called sabotage groups from Taman. This can be not only undermining, but also other methods up to the use of poisonous substances and a sudden outbreak of infectious diseases. Plague, cholera, dysentery, the Kursk or Smolensk nuclear power plants can also be the object of such provocations. The main task is to create a precedent for applying to the UN Security Council. As my informant said, this has already been agreed with the Russian Foreign Ministry at the highest level and, most likely, these materials have already been sent to the representative of the Russian Foreign Ministry to the UN, Nabenz. Now it becomes clear why Medvedev was hysterical on Sunday evening, mentioning the Smolensk nuclear power plant. And before the start of the NATO summit in Vilnius, final preparations are underway and preliminary agreements are being reached. The return of the Azov commanders, released by Turkey to Ukraine, boiled the cave community, which perceived this demarche of Erdogan as another scimitar in the back of the leader, who was promised that the Azov fighters would remain in Turkey until the end of the war. Zelensky again scored points, although, according to unverified reports, before releasing the Azovites, Erdogan announced his intentions to Putin, and met with no objections from him. But the greatest concern of the Rashists is caused by the agreements between Kiev and Ankara on the grain deal, which will be extended even after Russia withdraws from it. As cave analysts write, Erdogan's hands are untied after the presidential elections, he is able to provide guarantees himself. The Black Sea fleet of the Russian navy is pressed against the Crimea, it does not have the ability to operate in the Black Sea, and any attempts can be stopped or hindered by strikes both on the ships themselves and on the bases Sevastopol and Novorossiysk, end of quote. Meanwhile, the Turkish navy will ensure the security of the corridors for ships as part of the grain deal, which will respond with unbearable pain in the corridors of the Kremlin and the Ministry of Defense. The head of the Federation Council Committee on Defense and Security, Viktor Bondarev, commented on the recent actions of the Turkish side, saying that Turkey is turning from a neutral country into an unfriendly one. And this has not yet excited Madame Zakharova. Of the high-profile political statements before the summit in Vilnius, the most resonant was made by US President Joe Biden. He expressed the opinion that Ukraine is not yet ready to join NATO, as it is at war with Russia and must fulfill a number of requirements, including democratization. I don't think there is unanimity in NATO on whether Ukraine should be brought into the NATO family now, at this moment, in the midst of a war, Biden said in an interview with CNN and added that if the US and EU grant Kiev membership in alliance now, they will immediately have an obligation to defend Ukraine. If the war continues, then we are all at war. We are at war with Russia, if that's the case, end of quote. The German publication, Bild, reported that Germany and the United States are blocking Ukraine's accession to NATO. At the same time, Biden promises to support Kiev on the same model as Israel, recalling that at one time he rejected the demand of Putin, who sought commitments from the United States not to accept Ukraine into NATO. Zelensky's recent tour was supposed to serve to rally the Allies on the issue of admitting Ukraine to the alliance, but the main reason why this decision is being delayed the high level of corruption cannot be mixed. 
see this and other stories in full on the Patreon resource. Become our patrons now and look further in this program. Chief of Staff of the Russian Defense Ministry Gerasimov appeared on the video, where he receives the reports of the generals and gives orders. This refutes the reports of Russia's military correspondence about the removal of Gerasimov from command of Putin's military operation in Ukraine. Peskov confirmed the meeting between Prigozhin and Putin. According to Peskov, it took place on June 29. In addition to talking with Putin, Prigozhin personally spoke with the head of the Foreign Intelligence Service, Narishkin, and the head of the National Guard, Zolotov. However, some of the agreements were never implemented, which raises doubts about the unconditional implementation of Putin's orders. Most likely, Putin loses the status of the main arbiter, and the split intensifies in the gang. The main directorate of intelligence of Ukraine has published a video in which it announces the beginning of the reckoning of the Rashists for their deeds. And the British Times only increased the intrigue by releasing an article with the headline, Ukrainians will be in Crimea in a month. Latvian citizens living both in the country and abroad began to receive notifications of the initiation of administrative cases in connection with publications on social networks about the so-called May 9 holiday. And that is all. See the full version on Patreon. And thanks to everyone who is becoming our patrons right now. Hugs to all. See you on Thursday. Glory to Ukraine.